Lately, Bill Nelson has made it clear he is a stand-up guy. This is what someone commented about NASA Administrator Bill Nelson based on what he said to SpaceX after the historical Starship Flight 5. Indeed, unlike his words during previous launches, Bill's comments this time were much more inspiring. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. Congratulations to SpaceX on its successful booster catch and fifth Starship flight test today. As we prepare to go back to the moon under Artemis, continued testing will prepare us for the bold missions that lie ahead, including to the South Pole region of the moon and then on to Mars. As you know, after every Starship test flight, Bill Nelson has often sent congratulations to SpaceX's team for their great efforts. However, unlike the previous launches, Bill's statement in Flight 5 seems to catch more of the public's eye. Thank you for this. The American people need to know their government supports SpaceX and Elon Musk. Far too often it seems as though they're working against innovation. One commented under Bill's tweet, Elon Musk also expressed his deep gratitude for what NASA did for the Starship's project. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to serving NASA and returning humanity to the moon. Thanks to NASA's support, SpaceX can launch Flight 5 one month earlier than the FAA's schedule. As a funder for Starship's human landing system serving NASA's Artemis missions, the national agency is deeply involved in the Starship's demo flights. Any delay to the rocket's test flight could further delay the important government project. This explains the words of Lori Glaze, acting deputy associate administrator in NASA's Exploration Directorate at an October 9th meeting of the National Academy's Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board. She said the agency was really looking forward to the Starship flight, adding that it could happen as early as next week, mid-October, based on SpaceX comments. We've all been watching SpaceX. They work a little differently from traditional industry, she said. We're all keeping an eye on the progress as they continue developing development. That stems from NASA's concern about the potential delay for the Artemis III lunar lander, caused by a lot of technical challenges, including an in-space cryogenic propellant transfer test that the HLS effort faces. Of course, SpaceX needs enough time to perfect its system. It's safe to say that SpaceX is so clever to build and maintain a strong relationship with a large government agency. Thanks to that, the company has received abundant resources, including finance, benefits from old space, and reputation. While space SpaceX is shocking NASA and the whole industry with its incredible success in the latest test flight. Another NASA's contractor is showing its incompetence. Indeed, the Mobile Launcher 2 project, or ML2, which is designed to support the Space Launch System Block 1B launch and future configurations, will cost NASA an additional $2.7 billion until 2029 to be finished. This number is six times its original value of $383 million, and who drains NASA's budget dry this time is Bechtel, a global engineering, construction, and project management company. ML2 and SLS Block 1B will be crucial for missions, starting with Artemis 4 scheduled for launch in September 2028. In preparation for the construction of this modern architecture, in 2019, NASA awarded a $383 million cost-plus contract to Bechtel to design and build a second mobile launcher. At the time, Bechtel was supposed to deliver the launcher by March March 2023. By 2022, the contract value had increased to more than $1 billion, and its delivery date had been delayed to May 2026. Despite the initial cost projections, NASA's official Inspector General's report estimates that the mobile launcher could end up costing $2.7 billion and that it would not be ready to support the SLS launch until September 2029. The report is based on the cost overruns that have taken place over the past three years and the amount of construction that still remains before the mobile launch is ready. Cost and schedule estimates from NASA and Bechtel have changed several times and increased significantly over time, making it difficult for NASA to identify its funding needs, be accountable to Congress and other stakeholders, and accurately measure project and contractor performance. The report read, the agency's history of increasing the ML2's cost estimate over time also contributes to our assessment that costs will be higher than what the agency currently projects in its agency baseline commitment. The 2022 report made by NASA's Inspector General said, Bechtel underestimated the ML2 project's scope and complexity, experienced ML2 weight management challenges, and experienced staffing turnover and retention issues. In turn, Bechtel officials sought to blame some of the project's cost increases on the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Of course, delays and cost overruns are common problems on large NASA projects that use cost-plus contracts. Another typical example is Boeing SLS work that, according to NASA Inspector General, will reach approximately $5.7 billion before the system is scheduled to launch in 2028. This is $700 million more than NASA's 2023 agency baseline commitment. Additionally, work being done by Boeing, the main contractor, on the SLS core and upper stages, as as well as the rocket's flight avionics suite is criticized for not meeting international standards or agency requirements. Hardware and cost issues could threaten Artemis IV's September 2028 launch date. Back to the main subject, some explain that the issues on the ML-2 project are unavoidable due to its complex features. However, bear in mind that the SpaceX launch tower is also not less modern. It is designed to support the largest rocket ever built the Starship rocket, which is intended for a variety of missions, including lunar and Mars exploration. Thus, it needs to reach the required height of around 475 feet, higher than ML-2's height. In response, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted in August, Holy smokes, as a way to express his shock at the enormous cost and time it took to complete NASA's project. Elon's surprise makes sense because the Starship launch tower has been built relatively quickly and at a lower cost compared to ML-2. Indeed, Starship's first launch system just took over a year, from around July 2020 to August 2021, to finalize fundamental structures like the launch mount, launch tower, and Mechazilla arm. Following the maiden flight, additional time was spent, extending over a few months to incorporate the water deluge system beneath the launch mount. Therefore, based on the experience gained, the construction speed from the second tower onwards is going to be much faster. In contrast, a company like SpaceX that started out with a carpet and a mariachi band had to work hard from the very beginning. So, how did SpaceX go from near bankruptcy to NASA partner. In a NASA engineer's own words, in the early days working under NASA's commercial contracts, the working atmosphere at SpaceX was something like a frenzied graduate school, where all of the employees were being pulled in different directions. It's truly SpaceX's natural environment. By 2006, Musk, who had made millions when PayPal sold to eBay, had invested a third of his fortune into the space venture. In the same year, SpaceX attempted to launch its first rocket, Falcon 1, but ended up with failure as a result of a fuel leak and resultant fire. They launched it two more times, and all two times were also unsuccessful. They had one more chance on the fourth flight of Falcon 1. If it didn't work, then the firm would have gone bankrupt. Finally, God gave him a last chance as SpaceX's fourth flight as funding was beginning to run dry. On September 28, 2008, the Falcon 1's first successful launch was from Amalek Island in the Marshall Islands. It was also the first successful orbital launch from a privately funded company. Since then, SpaceX has officially been in the space game. In the same year, NASA signed contracts with SpaceX and Orbital Sciences Corporation, now Northrop Grumman, to build and fly their own cargo vehicles to the ISS. The plan worked. Not even a year after the shuttle program ended, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft made the first commercial berthing with the ISS. The first variant, later named Dragon 1, flew 23 cargo missions to the ISS between 2010 and 2020 before retiring. But flying cargo was never the endgame for SpaceX. In 2020, SpaceX became the first private company to send NASA astronauts to the ISS. The company's success with these initial programs gave NASA the confidence to extend commercial crew contracts with SpaceX. So far, under NASA's contract, the space company has conducted nine crewed missions to the ISS and even is taking charge of rescuing two NASA astronauts who cannot return on a Boeing Starliner. Things continued to go well when in June 2024, NASA awarded an $843 million contract to SpaceX to build the so-called U.S. deorbit vehicle. The SpaceX-built vehicle will effectively destroy the ISS by pushing the station into re-entry from orbit. In addition, the agency has a large interest in the Starship program, SpaceX's next generation. On the 16th of April, 2021, Starship HLS won a contract to play a critical role in the NASA-crewed spaceflight Artemis program. Excitement is guaranteed, success is possible. This is actually Elon Musk's favorite saying almost every time before the important test flights of Starship. It looks like a calming agent and shows an openness to failure. This time was not exceptional and it was just several hours ahead of the craziest aerospace event ever seen. Catching a 71-meter tall rocket booster in midair with Mechazilla 
of chopsticks. Elon Musk tweeted that quote again. There is no doubt that Starship's historic test flight really got everyone excited due to its heat. And more importantly, success this time was no longer possible as Elon said. Instead, it was a complete success. I screamed and cried of joy as I watched that Booster 12 return to the launch tower and, with precision guidance, nestled into the arms of the chopstick called Mechazilla by SpaceX. Yeah, it's so freaking awesome. Historic success on the first try. And I assure you that I am not alone in feeling this way. In fact, this is a common feeling of all space community. First and foremost, it's NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Congratulations to SpaceX on its successful booster catch and fifth Starship flight test today. As we prepare to go back to the moon under Artemis, continued testing will prepare us for the bold missions that lie ahead, including to the South Pole region of the moon and then on to Mars. Elon Musk quickly replied, Thank you, sir. Looking forward to serving NASA in returning humanity to the moon. While Starship Flight 5 is an entirely SpaceX operation, it's being watched with keen interest by NASA and especially its Human Landing System Program Office. A variant of Starship will be used during the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions, which will ferry astronauts to and from the surface of the moon. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell was left speechless. I don't know what to say. Remember, this woman played a key role in getting the FAA to approve Flight 5's launch date in October. Amid the context that the U.S. federal agency was still insisting on a November launch date, her voice at a congressional hearing had a significant influence. Furthermore, thanks to her good relationship with NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, the national agency was willing to participate as a launch licensee alongside the FAA. Thanks to that, SpaceX could outsmart the FAA to launch Starship as scheduled. Jared Isaacman, who partnered with SpaceX on the private manned spaceflight Polaris Dawn, sent his congratulations to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. Big congrats, Elon Musk. You and your SpaceX team are delivering on an incredible vision. You have once again inspired the world and people everywhere are now dreaming of what is possible. Witnessing the Ship 30's splashdown attempt, he continued, Starship landing next next to a data-gathering SpaceX buoy? If it wasn't clear before today, SpaceX truly operates on another level. Congrats to the entire team. You have given us yet another incredible glimpse into the future. It's no coincidence that Isaacman has a great interest in the Starship project. The mega rocket is planned to be a part of Polaris missions, whose first mission is Polaris Dawn. While few details have been released about the second, the third mission will be the first launch of SpaceX's Starship, with humans on board. As someone who has been keeping a close eye on SpaceX's ambitious activities, Canadian retired astronaut Chris Hadfield clearly doesn't want to miss out on this groundbreaking event. There was an enormous step forward in human capability today. Makes me even more excited for our collective future. Congratulations to all SpaceX. In another tweet, he also said, Wow, phenomenal. Attaching two photos of Booster returning and being caught, physicist Alex, who has always kept up with SpaceX breaking news, expressed his amazing amazement at this seemingly sci-fi technique. Engineering history was made today. We need to invent a new word that means beyond epic. Last but not least, guess who's coming up next? Well, she is Elon Musk's mother, May Musk. Unbelievable and nerve-wracking. Huge congrats. Everyone at SpaceX is so excited. So, how about you? Are you excited about this incredible booster catching attempt? Please comment on Flight 5 below. The Super Heavy Rocket and Starship spacecraft collectively called Starship, launched from Boca Chica at 7.25 a.m. The Super Heavy booster was successfully caught by two robotic arms minutes later. At T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, Flight 5 Starship Super Heavy rocket booster reignited its engines as it prepared to land. But it's a landing that no one had tried before, ever. Catching a 71-meter stainless steel structure with a mass of more than 250 tons, around T plus 649 seconds, the Flight 5 Super Heavy Booster 12 rocket was safely and soundly caught by the Mechazilla launch tower chopsticks on landing. This is a historic moment in spaceflight history. No government or private space agency has ever tried it before. Interestingly, SpaceX did it in the first attempt. The world was not expecting this outcome until the last moment. This operation is a key component of SpaceX's strategy for rapid reusability of rockets, aiming to streamline the process of refurbishment and relaunch. 
the booster was caught as it hovered near the launch tower, an achievement that has been described as a technological tour de force and a crucial step in developing fully reusable space vehicles. SpaceX's previous test flights had focused on splashdowns and landings, but this marked a new frontier in operational capability. In addition to the booster catch, the mission also aimed to send the Starship upper stage into space and return it for a planned splashdown in the Indian Ocean, approximately 65 minutes post-launch. This dual objective flight demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to refining its technology and enhancing its capabilities for future missions, including potential crewed flights to the Moon and Mars under NASA's Artemis program. The fifth flight test followed a successful June 6 flight test in which both the Starship craft and the Super Heavy booster landed at their intended locations. According to sources, the FAA has currently authorized SpaceX for Flight 6. Flight 6 hardware is mostly ready, and it could be as soon as late October. This fast movement of the FAA perhaps is attributed to SpaceX's tireless efforts to force the agency's bureaucracy to work much more efficiently. While the U.S. national election was coming closer, the tension between SpaceX and the Red Tape Party was hotter than ever. Most notably, Starship's important Flight 5 was ready to fly, but a surprising FAA announcement required them to wait until November probably after the U.S. national election, at the earliest to conduct the test. This is a move that SpaceX criticizes as not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. The most notable consideration listed by the FAA is the permit for operating Starship's water deluge system. The hardware has operated in Starbase for over a year, but now has recently become the target for fines, especially since the CNBC article in August saying SpaceX was discharging deluge water without TCEQ authorization and polluting the environment. SpaceX pushed back saying their system only uses clean drinking water and is monitored closely with no harmful contaminants found. America is being smothered by ever larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. Elon Musk wrote on X, as the pioneer in the wave of commercial spaceflight toward the ultimate goal, to explore other planets in our solar system and beyond, SpaceX is flying at an unprecedented pace as the world's most active launch services provider. SpaceX is also safely and reliably launching astronauts satellites, and other payloads on missions. To make multi-planetary life a reality, SpaceX has invested a lot of money, time, and effort into its greatest brainchild, Starship. Every flight of Starship has made tremendous progress and accomplished increasingly difficult test objectives, making the entire system more capable and more reliable. In a late September hearing, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell revealed that her firm invested more than $3 billion over the last few years into developing its facilities in the state for Starship, with just a billion in outlays in Texas this past year. Last year, Elon Musk also stated that SpaceX expected to spend around $2 billion on Starship development probably including $1 billion in Texas. He also added that he did not expect to have to raise funding to finance that work by investing a huge money into SpaceX's Starship facilities in Texas. Called Starbase, SpaceX aims to have a true gateway to Mars. Starbase has now become synonymous with the future of space exploration. The SpaceX executive shared that Starbase is a one-of-a-kind facility to manufacture, test, and launch the most advanced rockets on the planet there. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.